Yeah, first of all, thank you all for uh, for listening into this uh, to this call. So uh, ACI approached uh, approached Bosch to tell a little bit about uh, what we could uh, contribute to the COVID situation. So maybe two words about myself. So my name is uh, Maarten Wings. I'm working for Bosch, responsible for uh, for our airport business. And we have, uh, yeah, as Bosch, like 75% uh, of the largest airports in Europe are a Bosch customer. Of course, we're very proud of that and happy that we have also been approached to think along with the industry on how can we now make uh, a COVID passenger experience. But not only that, we were also approached by some of our partners and they said, you know, we're, we're losing money. We need to lower our operational costs. So also this is something that we took to heart um in uh, in the solution that i would like to show you um but before we uh, dive into the solution i would first like to talk a little bit on what we can actually already learn now from uh, from public events like for instance uh, here is a demonstration that was held in amsterdam which ran totally out of control the marrow in amsterdam actually expected like uh, two to three hundred people and in the end there were a few thousand social distancing was absolutely not kept so the next day the mayor of uh, the hague uh, decided that's not the way how we wanted to do it so he organized something and you see here is actually a perfectly orchestrated uh, demonstration also in context of the black lives matter um, so what was the big difference um, they put green dots on the grass uh, so people know what to do they started counting the people that were coming in so they actually prepared themselves and made sure that they had a little bit of data before they would be overrun with a situation they could afterwards not manage anymore like what happened in Amsterdam. So similar uh, challenges. Um, ah, now the beaches are opening again in Spain. So uh, people are allowed to be on the beach, but also here. How do you now guarantee the ability of social distancing? It's actually the same challenge as we had in the in the protests. And this is a project where, where Bosch was actually involved. So um, from a crowd management perspective, we know that if you want to control a crowd, you need to have situational awareness. So this means you need to be able to identify a problem when it is arising. You need to be able to anticipate based on uh, real-time data. So know how is the crowd behaving? How many people are there? How is the crowd flowing? And you want to be able to see it. So this is something uh, where, where a camera can help. So uh, in Spain, we have some cameras at the beaches and this is here a demonstration uh, movie where you see a little bit of the idea. So we have made multiple logical areas within the camera view and you see um, in the top, you see the counters running where the camera is basically counting the amount of people and just by knowing how large the area actually is we know how many people are allowed to be in that area and we can also identify areas which are basically too busy so this data is real time you see immediately what's happening you also have a view through the camera so you can verify that what the data is telling is actually true so this is something which is uh, which is beneficial if you want to deal with crowds. So now this is the webcam of Dusseldorf Airport. Unfortunately, this picture hurt really a lot. <laughs> it's uh, it's empty, but soon it will be soon it will hopefully be busy again. And now the question would be, how do we prepare? How do we end up with uh, the Hague scenario and not with the Amsterdam scenario? And the answer would also be. Also here, if we want to understand what's happening at the airport and what's uh, what's coming towards us, signage and data needs to be in place so that we are prepared. So what's probably the first things that uh, airports are thinking of is probably staff and stickers. Uh, so put uh, staff in the field. Um, maybe if you want to do something with counting, that could be a, that could be a manual count. Um, I saw through the ACI conference some example of signage that you put on the benches or that you put stickers on the floor, how people are uh, supposed to walk. But in the end, this has a few drawbacks. Uh, first of all, if you use a lot of stuff, that's quite, uh, quite intensive for the workload, but it's also quite costly. Um, also, staff is exposed to passengers again, maybe something which you want to, which you want to limit. 
Um, also, data collected by a human being is not real time, so you're actually not seeing the big picture. And if you have pass, if you just have a signage uh, through a sticker or through a poster, that is very passive and very easy to ignore. So imagine now you would now have something in place which is real time, so you understand the situation, you see what's happening. Now, most probably the terminal will not be the biggest issue because that's a large open space where you will have enough space for people to keep social distancing. But there will be a few areas which you run into problems. For instance, people stepping on escalators, uh, queuing areas. Um, those are all areas uh, where people are in narrow spaces or in passages where you could run into uh, social distancing issues. So we actually made together with the company Philips, you probably know them, Bosch and Philips together, we went for a very practical, quick to install solution where we are using the camera technology to count people and where we are using one of the Philips monitors, which also has a processing unit inside to process the counts and provide information to the customer. So here is one use case as an example. Um, you probably want to define a flow direction, maybe some entrances people can enter, some uh, doors people need to exit. Maybe you will have some arrows on the floor um, if you look at the, uh, at the queuing areas. We can detect with the camera if somebody's walking in the wrong direction. And instead of uh, uh, leaving that unnoticed, we can we can um, uh, make the, the monitor make an uh, announcement on this. So like here, you see the red screen, wrong way, please use the other door, or wrong way, please go in the other direction. This is an active signage where you are really communicating with the people without staff being involved. Here is another example, uh, the escalators, you know, people stand very close to each other with the trolleys uh, or the suitcases on the escalators. Um, also there, either you shut the escalators off or you need to put somebody there who is telling the people how to behave on the escalator or you can automate it. So a solution here would be that the camera is installed at the escalator and we are basically um, monitoring the people that are stepping on the escalator and only when there is enough social distance already because the person already progressed on the escalator, then the traffic light goes back to green. If the person is still not on the escalator, then the traffic light is red. So very practical way to basically control the inflow in an automated manner um, on escalators also working for travelators. Then queuing areas, for sure we will have this. A security checkpoint will be one of them. Um, probably you already have some stickers on the floor which is indicating where people need to stand one and a half meters apart so you know what's the capacity of the queue. Uh, if you have 50 stickers on the floor, you know that there can be 50 uh, people inside. Um, so how are you gonna control that now that no new persons are entering this area? so that the area gets overcrowded. Also there again, we can count the inflow and we can count the outflow of the security area and we post the monitor on the, on the outside of that area. If the traffic light is red, people cannot enter. If the traffic light is green, a person can step in and join the queue. Now, same goes to retail. This is one of these uh, narrow spaces where, uh, where people easily crowd. So also there, instead of uh, having a person standing at the door, you can also have a monitor like you see here on the left picture, that's even with some advertisement. And it's just, uh, it's basically telling whether people are allowed uh, to enter or not. And uh, uh, it organizes it by itself. So also there the technology is helping. Um, one of the other benefits is uh, you can also, these are standalone operations, right? You just put a camera and you put a monitor or you put a few cameras and a few monitors, just depends a little bit on how many entrances you have and monitors where you want to announce. But if you also want to collect the data and you want to understand where are now my hotspots, where do I always have issues that uh, too many people are crowding and coming together to analyze afterwards, and to improve your operations then over time, you can also um, put this data online and start collecting them via the security management system. That's an additional option if you also want to have the insights on what's happening in the terminal. 
so yeah, this was uh, a little bit what I wanted to say. So uh, a practical solution, I think addressing uh, the need of controlling social distancing uh, in the terminal. Um, also opportunity to reduce operational costs because instead of using staff, you are using technology. And uh, with the picture here, I would like to encourage you to think ahead and uh, not wait uh, what happens uh, like they did in Amsterdam, but rather think ahead and see how you can prevent this uh, situation from happening. So this was uh, from my end. I'm very happy to uh, answer questions now in the, in the questionnaire section. And also if you want to uh, contact me around, uh, around our solutions or you're interested in this, uh, please let me know. We're always there for you. Thank you very much.